Hello everyone. In the last Architect ALP video, I mentioned that transmitting Boolean data over the network and converting each of these variables into an integer is not the best idea, although it generally works. The issue is that in this case, we use too much network memory on our device, which is often limited. And it's not surprising, because with this approach, instead of one bit occupied by a boolean variable, we use entire register. Therefore, it's better to use masks. Today, we will talk about that. But first, let's understand what a bit mask is. Typically, it's an integer parameter that has access to its sub-elements in other words, to the bits from which it is composed. Such a parameter occupies two bytes, meaning one Modbus register, and it can contain a whole 16 bits, in other words, 16 logical variables. So, a mask is essentially a code, each value of which corresponds to some unique states of the bits from which this mask is composed. The value, by the way, results from converting binary numbers to decimal. In fact, to work with masks, you don't need to know how to convert from binary to decimal. You just need to understand how these masks are packed and unpacked. That's how we can take a certain set of bits and put it into this mask, and then how to extract it. For these operations, the functions put bit and extract are used. By the way, we talked about them in one of the previous videos. It's time to apply them in practice. Let's solve two tasks together. The first one is about unpacking masks. Suppose we have read a state mask from some slave device and we want to extract from it 8 boolean variables that were packed into it. This situation is typical for querying discrete input modules when you read from the module the state mask of its input elements and we want to use individual inputs as logical variables in the program as it's simply much more convenient. For this, we need the extract function. In the x input of this function, we submit the masks from which we want to extract a particular element. At the n input, we provide the ordinal number of the bit we want to extract from this mask. By the way, the numbering of bits in masks start from zero. I will use an integer constant for these purposes. As the output of the extract function, we will receive the state of this very bit at the indicated number in the indicated variable. Speaking of input-output modules, the zero bit usually contains the state of the first input or first output. It's not hard to guess that to extract the state of all 8 inputs, we will need to duplicate this algorithm 8 times in this case. The result will be something like this construction. There are 8 extract blocks, each with the mask variable x as input, but with different bit numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, up to 7. And we record the results of this function into separate logical or boolean variables, input 1, input 2, input 3, and so on, up to 8. And once again, I draw your attention to the fact that the numbering of bits in max start from 0. And if we talk about input-output modules, then in the zero bit usually lies the state of first discrete input 
or out in the first bit accordingly, to, and so forth. The second task is about packing masks. Suppose we want to write a certain state mask on slave device encoding or boolean variables into it. This situation is typical for discrete output modules, when you want to control the discrete outputs of this module in the program as logical variables. But to write them to the module, they need to be converted into an output mask, in other words, packed into integer variables. For packing masks, we need a function called put bits. On the x input, we submit the very mask into which we want to change something. On the n input, as in the extract function, we submit the number of the bit to be changed, and on the b input, its new state. As a result, on the q output, we get a new changed mask. It's not hard to guess that to encode for such elements into one mask, we will need four put bit blocks. I suggest connecting them as follows. Use the output of each block as input data for the following block in the sequence. The result of the last block from this chain we will write into the output mask. As initial data for the first block in the chain, you can also take the output mask, or you can take just an integer constant equal to zero that is, essentially an empty mask in which there is still nothing. Analogous to the extract function, we will write into the zero bit the state of the first output, which we need to transmit to the slave device, into bit number one, accordingly the second output, and so forth. In one mask, there are 16 bits from zero to 15. And, as you can guess, if you need to pack more than four values into one mask, then you just make the car land longer. And, if you will be connecting to PR our modules from the MX110 or 210 series, then exactly for working with their inputs and outputs, you will be using packing and unpacking masks. And, to the task from our last video. This method could also have been adapted. There we transferred from the SME200 operator panel to PR two logical variables, commands for turning on and off a lamp. They could have been packed using the put bit function on SME200 into one integer variable, and then on PR using the extract function extract from this integer variable. As you can see, packing and unpacking these masks take up quite a lot of space on your Akitek ALP workspace and looks bulky. Here macros will come to our aid, but about them, as usual, we'll talk in the next video. Meanwhile, subscribe to our channel and write in the comments if something is unclear. Thanks for watching and see you next time.